What's going on guys, Coast to Coast here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Um, I know I've been trying to find a good video for something like this for a really long time, and I could never really find one that gave me everything I needed to know. So hopefully this video helps you out. Um, this is probably going to be a pretty long video, but I'll post some timestamps so you can get to the parts you want to find. So, um, if you're here, then you probably want to figure out how to make a custom either hockey or baseball, basketball, football, anything. You want to know how to make custom cards. So for this, I'll be using Pixlr. So you see here, I have the I have the app downloaded. You don't need the app; you can use it just in your web browser. I got I downloaded the app just because it's easier for me to access because I use it a lot. So I'll leave the link for this down in the description. Um, yeah, so if there's any resource that I mentioned in this video, I'll have a link down in the description for it. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So, first, I guess, yeah, I guess first off, why? Why would you make a custom card? Well, for me personally, I collect autographs through the mail. So what, I'll, what, that, what that means is I'll write a letter to a player, um... I'll send. I'll include a card in the envelope, and I'll send it to the player and ask them to sign it. So I actually have a whole video on that, which I'll le I'll link down either in the pinned comment or the top of the description, one of the two. And yeah, so I did a whole video covering all that and how you can do that. So let's say there's a player that I don't have a card of that I want to send to. Like I, there's a player that I want to send to, but I don't have a card for them, and I want to get an autograph from them then what I'll do is I'll make a custom card so I will say I haven't actually printed any of these cards yet because I haven't had ink in the printer and I haven't had the um any like the materials or resources I need to like because so, obviously designing them is only one part and you actually have to cut them and everything which I'll talk about later on so I haven't had the materials needed for that yet so once I do that I'll likely make a video and show you how to do that but um yeah, so this video is just going to be only about designing the cards. So, as you can see, I got this big template. So, you see all these different frames. So, what I can do is I can double click on that and I can open an image in these frames. So, but that's that's for later on. So, let's start out with this. This is my template for the front of a card. So, as you can see up here, you've got the player name, the position, and the team. Um, this white box right here, this is where the player would sign. So again, like I said, I would if I, I'm making these cards so I can send to a player, like so I can send the card to a player through the mail and ask them to sign it. So that th like this white rectangle is just a place for them to sign. So and this I'll have this document or not this exact one. I'll have a similar one um, with all these different things. As you can see, I've got the little one of one logo right there. So what you can do is you can like toggle these on and off. Um, yeah, so it'll be, it's really easy to use. It's not I don't have a lot of layers, so it's pretty easy to um, to understand. So yeah, so here's the template. So um, we have the template ready. Now it's time to decide on a player. So for this video, I'm going to be doing a custom card of Greg McKeg. So as you can see, I got the Greg McKay Google search is already pulled up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to images. So now we got all these great pictures of Greg McKay. What you want to do is go to tools, go to size, and go to large. That way you know you're getting the best possible pictures. So now I just gotta find a picture. I wanna get one of him with the Charlotte Checkers. So I'll get that. All right, now we got some pictures of Greg McKay on the checkers. Go back to large. Hmm, there's no great ones of him on the checkers, so you know what? Let's use this one. I remember the sandwich. I don't think I ever ate it, but I do remember that when it was released. So we'll use this picture of Greg McKay with the sandwich. So what we're going to do is copy that, which I don't know, you, I just did that, so you might have seen that. Basically, all you got to do 
right click hit copy image so then you're gonna go back to Pixlr and you're gonna paste it you're gonna right click it's not letting me paste so we're gonna go back to Google and copy it again and then I'm just gonna control V there we go now it pasted so make sure this is on fixed because if it's on free the when you resize it, it's gonna be all messed up so here we go we got our picture of Greg McKegg and his sandwich so we're gonna reposition this make it fit there now as you can see it's on top of everything so we're gonna click on the layer on the side and we're gonna drag it all the way down to the bottom see it's still not all the way down oops I grabbed the wrong layer we're gonna go back to this one there we go now it's below everything so as you can see it's still kinda blur so this probably wasn't the best picture to use but for the sake of this video I'm just gonna use it so I don't spend the entire time looking for a good one but like as you can see this one is 1200 by 900 let's find a different one so let's say no that one's not good enough let's say this one alright I gotta find a good one here so here's a per like 2268 by 2509 pixels that's like a that's a good size for this but again like I said I wanna use one of him on the checkers so I'm gonna use this one so this is not the ideal size you want it to be bigger but if the, if you can only find some if you can only find more like blurrier images then that's what you gotta do so but even here like it's not too bad so we have our image now so I'm actually gonna resize this a little bit as you can see I have that white border so I wanna use as much of the actual picture that I, that I can alright there we go that's perfect because you don't want any of the background sticking out so there we go we got um we got our picture I don't know what's going on right now looks like Pixlr is not working okay and yeah I apologize there are probably gonna be some difficulties with Pixlr my laptop is I don't know my laptop has issues with it occasionally and I'm sure the screen recording isn't helping but here we go so we've got our picture of Greg McKegg and we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna go here so you're gonna double click and we're gonna replace player name with Greg McKegg for the position I believe he's a center so I'll go back here and I'll confirm and yes Greg McKegg is a center so we're gonna come over here and yes so he is a center you can see that right there so Greg McKegg is the center so we're gonna come here and we're gonna put a C there and then for the team just I'm gonna put checkers again you can if you want to write center out all the way you can do that if you want to write Charlotte checkers or like the city and the team name or just the city you can do you can do whatever you want but for me this is how I do all mine so there we go we got the name bar done um, and again this is just I would be using this card to send in the mail to Greg McKegg and have him sign it so obviously I'm gonna keep this little autograph rectangle on there you can turn that off if, you're, if you just want to have the cards um, yes yeah, so you can do either you can do whatever you want to do that was one of one on some of my cards I like having I don't know it just adds it's a nice little touch so um, obviously you don't have to have it like the white rectangle so that's what it'll look like without it I'm gonna keep it on so then down here we have this little frame in this diamond so what we're gonna do here is put the team logo so we're gonna go back to Google we're gonna search for Charlotte checkers logo I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go to tools large there we go alright so we got a bunch of checkers logos I usually grab the one from Wikipedia because it's the biggest so what we're gonna do this, this time we're not gonna copy it we're gonna right click and we're gonna save it so I'm just gonna save it as whatever I saved that in the wrong um, folder but that's okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here let's see I think I accidentally yeah I saved it in the wrong folder I saved it in my NHL cover 
which you might you might see a video on some of these later. So um, stay tuned for that. So we got the checkers logo here. We're gonna open it, and there we go. Paste it perfectly in the diamond. So that's what you want to see. Although you can see it's a little cut off on the top. What you want to do there? Let's go back here. Now you're gonna copy it, and then you're gonna come back, and this is gonna be really big. See, there we go. And see, see there, I had it on free instead of fixed. So you gotta make sure you have it on fixed. So now we're gonna resize it. Actually, we're gonna move it first so it doesn't get it, so the rectangle doesn't get in the way. We're gonna start to resize it. And then, see, it's all the way down here. So you wanna have it at the top, all the way at the top. Not, I don't know what's going on. My mouse is weird sometimes. All right, so now it's at the top. So you're gonna zoom in, and you're gonna resize it. I'm gonna lower the transparency. That way I can see the frame, or the logo in the frame. So we're gonna keep resizing. And then you can use the arrow keys to get the really precise adjustments. So as you can see, that's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. All you can see right here that it goes off the edge a little bit. I know the frame, the frame isn't perfectly centered on the diamond, but it's pretty close. So what I'm gonna do here is instead I'm gonna turn the transparency back up, and then I'm gonna move it a little bit. So so now it's you can see the frame. So what we're gonna do here is just get rid of that. So now you can't see the frame and you only see the top, the top logo that was adjusted to fit the diamond perfectly. And there we go. So now it's perfect. So we got Greg McKegg. We got his name, his position, his team. We got the logo. We got the autograph box. And we got the one of one symbol. So there we go. Um, the front is all done. And we're ready to go to the back. So here... And I just I modeled this after 1990, 91 upper deck cards. I'm sure you can see the resemblance if you're familiar with those cards. Um, I don't know. I just really like the design of those. So if you if the design looks similar, then or if it look if it looks familiar, then that's probably why because it's similar to those cards. So we're on the back now. So up here again, you can see this. So we're gonna put. Greg McKaig, he is the center, and he, he's on the checkers for this card, and I accidentally click there. Alright, so this is where we get his stats and his information. So his height, we got that, go back here, and we're going to go back to all. And here's Greg McKaig. Normally it has his height over here, but it's not there right now, so we're going to go to the NHL website. And again, you can use whatever website, like Hockey Reference is a good one, Hockey DB. I'm just going to use the NHL site. All right, so Greg McKaig is six feet tall. So here, we're going to do six foot. Or, you could probably, yeah, just do that. I think the proper way is like that. Let me just confirm. Yes, okay. So now we want his weight. As you can see right there, it's 194 pounds. So for the weight, he was born on, let's see, June 17th, 1992. So for that, I see the abbreviation of the month. And then the rest of it is full. And then he shoots left. Alright, so there's this information. Now we're going to go to the stats. So for stats, I like to use Hockey Reference or Hockey. I'm just going to use Hockey DB. Um, I'm going to search for Greg McKegg. And then here you can see all his stats. So 
you can see it's set the it's color coded based on the league. So I'm just gonna use his NHL stats. Although I guess it's a checkers card, so I should be using his I'll yeah, I'll use his AHL stats, not his NHL stats. So obviously if you're doing an NHL player, you're gonna want to use his NHL stats. Um my McKeg card, the front picture of is of him on the checkers, which they're an AHL team. So I'm gonna use his AHL stats. So right here, I'm gonna change NHL oops to AHL. And there we go. Is that I messed this up? Alright. No. Yes I did. I put an extra space. No, I didn't. Okay. So there we go. Now we're gonna go here. One actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this as like a 2019-20 AHL card, so I'm not going to include his time with the Providence Bruins. So I'm going to start with his last year on the checkers, and we're going to go back. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he has nine AHL seasons. So we're going to go here. I'm going to go to the text again, and we're going to make it nine. Now, we're going to go here. And these are all the different seasons. So the last one is going to be 1819. If I can type it, there we go. Then before that, it was 1718. Let me just confirm he played in the AHL all these seasons 1617, 1516, 1415. Okay, yeah, we're good. So we're just going to fill in all these. Alright, there we go. So we got all the years he played in the AHL. In. So I'm just listing the five most recent years, and then at the bottom we're going to have his total career stats. Um. Alright, so now I'm going to use the... For when you put when it says team, you're gonna use the abbreviations. So, hold on, did I? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know. I, don't know, I thought I had added something to adjust it. No, it's not on there. Okay, yeah. So I don't know. I haven't I haven't done one of these in a while. But when you get here, so we're going to start with, we're going to start at the very top. I know it's kind of hard to see the text box is, over, is overlapping the other part. All right, now it's, oops, I accidentally moved that. All right, I mean, that's, it's still kind of hard to read with the, because it's overlapping, but that's fine. So for the team, 2014-15, I believe it was the Toronto Marlies. Yes, it was. Okay. So we're going to use the abbreviation, and we're going to add spaces to make it centered with the team. So then, played with them again there. Wait, I'm not actually my room wrong. Yeah, it was the Pirates. So I believe their abbreviation is PR. Obviously, if you're doing an NHL card, it's easier to find these abbreviations. I don't know all the AHL stuff offhand. So, I'm just assuming, but that's fine. So, 6 and 17 was the Springfield Thunderbirds. I'm just, again, I don't know if these are the correct um, abbreviations. I'm just doing what I think it would be for, the, for this video. And then, he's played two years with the Checkers. And then, again, we're going to add the spaces to make it centered. We're going to center it as best as possible. So there we go. We got all the abbreviations in. And then we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to have to add spaces. And then right here for games played. 62 games played. And then that's not perfectly centered. So you're going to do that. There we go. That's centered right there. So again, it's really all um, trial and error with these. With getting it centered and everything. So that's probably going to be kind of time consuming. So um yeah, it's a, it's a very tedious process, but 
it doesn't have, it doesn't even have to be perfectly centered like you see with these abbreviations um like it because the the years the different because it's not the same text for each for each year obviously it's different numbers and then the different if one like let's say here the nine is slightly bigger than the eight so then that affects this which is later on so it's, it's just all going to be trial and error um just add the spaces until it looks good until you think it looks good and then yeah then you're good so I'm going to speed this part up with me filling in the stats because it's really not there's really nothing to talk about it's just all it is is just grabbing data from whatever website you're using and then you're going to go into um, go into the text box and add it in so I'm going to speed this part up so um, yeah, I'll talk to you again when we get to the next step Alright, so now I'm noticing for 2017-18, I forgot to add the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to add their abbreviation. And then, yeah, so that is going to be the stat of both, the, both of those teams. So just be careful when you're looking at that because I just skipped over it quickly. And I forgot about that part. So if they if they were traded in the middle of the season, make sure you um make sure you look at that. If you want to have like two of these um like let's say instead of sixteen seventeen, I had seventeen eighteen there, and I only included his um his stats with the Scranton Penguins, then you could do that. But I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have the stats with both the teams and with both their abbreviations in the same season. So just remember if you're doing that, don't if you're when you're doing the back, don't forget to add that if the player was traded during the season. Alright, so as you guys can see, I have all his season stats filled out. Now I'm just going to add all up, I'm going to add up all his AHL stats. So for that, I don't think that's the URL. That's definitely not. Yeah, that's right, there's a dash. So I like to go to hockey reference. I know, I know for the NHL, it shows like their total stats. Um... Who's this Islander on here? Is that okay? Steven Jackson. I don't know. That just caught my eye. Um, 
Alright, so we got Greg McKegg here. Yeah, see, so it shows all his NHL stats and his stats with all the individual teams. Doesn't show his AHL. Um, I could have sworn it showed his AHL. I guess not. So we'll come back here. And, yeah, so we'll just add up all his AHL stats. So I'm going to speed that up. And, yeah, I'll see you guys when I'm done. Alright guys, so as you can see I forgot to um make the text box longer. So I'll probably change that for the template, but um if I forget, yeah, you just click on the this like white part of the rectangle at the end. You just click on it and then you can drag it to however long you want it. So I usually do it well over the edge just so I have enough space. So yeah, back to the stats. Alright guys, so there we go, we got all the stats done. So yeah, that's probably gonna be the most time consuming part of the um, of the card. So now we're on to the pictures, the rest of the pictures. So right here you see we have another frame, that's for the logo, so we'll open that up. We'll open the checkers logo up that we saved earlier. This time, yeah, it's still cut off a little bit. So yeah, we still have it copied. So, and if you want, what you want, what you can do is you can click on the frame and you can look at the, sorry, the um, height and width. So you can see it's 555 by 555. So you can come here on the bigger logo and make it that size. So now the height, or no, the height, oh yeah, yeah, the width, the height is cut off, so you want to do the width. So what you're going to do is, Move that over. Gonna change the transparency. Then you're gonna use the arrow keys to adjust it, whichever looks best. So that right there looks perfect. So we're gonna turn the transparency all the way up and hide the background one. Um. Yeah. So then you got the card number right here. Um. So obviously, if you're doing a whole set, you're gonna want to have the card number. When, I, when I'm making the cards that I'm just going to send to the players in the mail, I just put their jersey number. So when, when McKegg was with the checkers, he wore number 14. So I'm going to put number 14 on there. So now we got the back picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Google. Um, going to 
gonna start for Greg McKegg again with the checkers. And we're gonna filter to large images. Alright, so this is gonna be tough because it doesn't look like there's any high quality pictures of McKegg that'll fit this rectangle, this open rectangle. So, again, obviously you want to have the teams matching up, um, but here's a picture of him with the Hurricanes, so obviously the same system. So we're going to bring that, we're going to copy that, we're going to paste it, and then as you can see it's really small, so we're going to move that to the bottom. Oops, I did not mean to cut that either. All right. Actually, you know what? We're going to move that on top of this background layer and so we can move it to the bottom corner. Then we're going to resize it. We're going to make sure it's lined up perfectly with the corners. There we go. And then just going to adjust it here. As you can see, there's no there's nothing over here. Like the background is completely covered up by the picture. And that's when you know it's good to move back to the bottom. But it's still not aligned. So we're going to hide this layer. Going to keep it how it is and centered and everything. We're just going to move it down. And then we're going to put this layer back on. And again, obviously that's not perfect. But we can still adjust it. Make it a little smaller. And there we go. So again, it's not with with some players. It's easier it's easier to find pictures that'll fit this area. Like I know for goalies, there's a picture of them stretching during warmups. Um, you know what? I'll show you a picture. I'll show you a good example. So we're gonna do. So we're gonna find Ilya Sorokin. Um, like this picture right here. This is this is perfect. So you can see, obviously, this isn't during warm-ups, this is during a game. But you see he's stretching. Um, I know there's a picture, yeah, like right here. Here's that picture. So this is during warm-ups, it's just him stretching. So if you're doing a goalie, a picture like this is perfect. Um, obviously, there's a, pro there's a better chance you're doing a skater than a goalie. So with that, you just got to try and find pictures that'll fit. But, yeah, so... The back of the card is now done. So what we're going to want to do before we save this back. Actually, you know what? We're going to go back to the front first. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. Hopefully you can follow along. Um, if you have questions about anything, just drop a comment. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, yeah, so first we're going to save this. So I usually save it as a PNG because it's the highest quality. And then we're gonna title it. Oops, no. There we go. We're gonna do McKeg front. So that's the front of the McKeg card. That's saved. Now for the back. Before we save it, we're gonna go to want to go to image, image rotation, and we're gonna ro want to rotate it left. Or maybe not. Sometimes there's issues with Pixlr. Oh, I know what I have to do. So before you rotate it left, just click on the top layer and you're going to want to hit merge visible. That way every single layer is merged. So now there, see everything's together. So if you hide it, then it hides everything. So now you want to go to image rotation, hit rotate left. There we go. Now the text rotates with it. So what we're going to do is save it just like we did last time. I'm going to save it as a PNG. Name it McKeg back and hit save. So we got that. Now we're going to go to the templates, to the template sheet. So here, let's say let's say for all 9 of these we're going to do McKeg. Actually, you know what? No, cuz that wouldn't that wouldn't work. So, we're just going to do the front. So we're going to put McKeg there, there's the front. So you zoom in, you see everything's there. We got the text there, everything. So 
when you're putting the cards on these the printing sheets yeah so this this sheet right here is what you're gonna print out I should have said that earlier so when you're putting the cards on this sheet you have got to make sure that you put all the front all the front of the cards on one sheet and then put all the backs on a different sheet because if you put it if you put the fronts and the backs on the same sheet it's not it's it's going to be so much harder to align everything and it won't be cut the same and you'll have all sorts of issues so make sure all the fronts are on one sheet and all the backs are on another sheet so i know i have other cards oops i accidentally moved that frame so i'm just going to search front cuz i know i have other cards so here we got adam pellick we got the front of that card so there's Adam Pellick. We got the Pellick Posse logo. If you know, you know. If you don't, you're missing out. So I'll just I keep moving on accident. I'm not used to using a mouse. I usually just use the touchpad. So we're just gonna do this top row. Obviously you can do the whole row or you can just do a few. So we're gonna go back here. Just gonna get another front of the card. You know what? We're gonna use Jimmy Howard. There we go. So we got Jimmy Howard here. So there we go. So we're going to act like we have the entire sheet filled out. So once you have once you have all the fronts, you're going to want to open the card sheet template again. There we go. So now we have another blank template. So, this is where you gotta you gotta look at the, where the fronts are. So, here you see the McKeg one is on the top left. So that means when you go on when you go on the sheet that has the printing sheet that has all the backs, you're gonna want to put the back of the McKeg card on the top right. And that's because when you print it, when you print out these um, these sheets. The way you're gonna put them together is you're gonna have so you're gonna have the front sheet, you're gonna print that out, you're gonna place a piece of cardstock in between, and you're gonna glue the front sheet onto the cardstock. And then after that, you're gonna glue the back sheet onto the other side of the cardstock. So if this if let's say we put this on the top left, then when you put it on the back, obviously you want the images facing out so you can see them. If you put them both on the top left, then they're going to be on opposite sides when you try to cut them, and it's not going to be the right cards. So whatever whatever side it's on, you're going to want to put it on the opposite in terms of left and right. You, like with Pellick, he's on the like he's in the center of the top row, so you're going to put the back of Pellick on the center and the top row on the same on the back sheet. So you, you, the, the only on, flipping only happens when in terms of left and right. So if something's on the left side, you're gonna put it on the right on this sheet, and if something's on the right side on this sheet, you're gonna put it on the left on this sheet. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm not gonna put in the rest of that because you get the idea now. So then at this point, you're gonna want to save this. So we're gonna save it. There we go. We're gonna save it as a PNG again. I'm just gonna put so video because it's for the video. So here we go. We got the front, and then you're gonna just you're gonna save the back sheets as well. So here we go. We got the front sheets. This is after I saved it. When you print this, and I'll go over this in the next video about printing. I don't know when that video will be released, but yeah. So. All right, let's see. You've got to try this printer. Hopefully this works because it'll be a problem if it doesn't. Okay, there we go. So obviously you want it in color. And now we're going to come to the settings. So again, I'll cover this in the next video when I talk about printing and actually putting the cards together. But so just look at all these, all these settings. So letter, I think that's the normal paper size. Pages per sheet, one. If you want to do multiple, then I mean I'm sure you know what that means if you're watching this video. 
Um, all right, so the scale, you want that at 100. You don't want any margins. That's the biggest thing, because if you have margins on, you'll see what happens. Put it on default. See, so you have the margins, and then that messes everything up. And then let's, I know, I think they normally have headers and footers on. I think that's a, like a default setting. So yeah, you see you have that in the top and the bottom. So you're going to want to turn headers and footers off, and you're going to want to turn margins off. Because this, the card, te the printing sheet, that size is perfect, so it'll print perfectly onto an 8.5 by 11 um, piece of paper so all you gotta do here is print it now I'm not gonna print it because I don't have any ink right now but once you have it you're gonna print it and then you're gonna do the same thing for the back and yeah so I think that's where we're gonna stop today so I'll just go over everything again you're gonna open the front and back templates that I'll link in the description um, you're gonna wanna download those you have to open it in Pixlr E so I'll, I'll leave a link to Pixlr E in the description because if you open it in Photoshop it won't work. Actually, I don't know if these types of files, because they're PXZs, and that what that means is when you open it in Pixlr, all the layers will be there. It won't be just one image. All the layers will be there so you can edit the text and everything. So it'll be really convenient, it'll be really easy to use. I tried to make it as simple as possible. So you gotta use Pixlr E. So again, I'll leave a link to everything in the, descri in the description. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, leave a comment. Even if you're seeing this like three years after it's uploaded, I will still reply to comments on this video because I know how frustrating it can be to not, like, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I know it can be frustrating to like be looking and not find a video that um, helps you out with this. So yeah, three years from now, if you're watching this, leave a comment. I'll still almost likely reply. So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Again, leave a comment if you need help with anything. Um, leave a comment for if you, there's a video you want me to do, like a certain topic. Um, remember to leave a like, subscribe. Um, yeah, and again, leave a comment. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.